<coughs> so, before we um, continue with the, the chapter four on uh, inventory control with deterministic demand, I thought I should present assignment number three. Uh, it has been uploaded a few days in, in Fronter, so some of you have already had the opportunity to, to look at it. And uh, uh, it uh, consists of uh, four different problems. Uh, the two first you should be able to solve, at least after this lecture. Um, and first, we are talking about a problem with the inventory control with known demand when you are buying uh, inventory fr from uh, another vendor. Uh, you have uh, a store uh, which is importing some kind of uh, smoked sausages and they estimate a demand which is stable of 2100 per year. And the cost of placing an order is given here. Cost of uh, the sausages will be 1850 each. And they use an internal interest rate which is 22% for the cost of capital. And in addition, they have a storage cost of 3% and a cost for taxes and insurance of 2%. So to calculate the internal interest rate, you need to add all these part of, of, the, of the interest rate. Capital cost is only one part, usually the major part, 22% in this case, but you also have to add 3% and 2% to get the exact value of the parameter i, which describes the internal interest rate. So here, use the EOQ formula, find the optimal order size, and how, oft how often it should be ordered, which of course will depend on the order size, but you should answer both these two questions. Uh, on B, what is the ordering cost and the holding cost with this strategy? Try to calculate, calculate each of the, the costs, and as you hopefully remember, you will get exactly the same value on the ordering cost and the holding cost if you're using the optimal strategy. <coughs> uh, on C, you have a lead time of three weeks, so how many sausages should be on stock when a new order is placed? Which means you need to find out what is the demand for three weeks, the demand in the lead time, and calculate the um, and calculate the, uh, the, the demand in the lead time as uh, the annual demand and multiply by the fraction of the year, which in this case is three weeks. And if it doesn't state exactly, then you should of course use 52 weeks if another, nothing else is, uh, is stated. Uh, market price for sausage estimated to 30. So what will then be the profit? the store will expect on this product. And at last, the manager realizes that the sausage will have a shelf life of six weeks after they are delivered at the, the store. So how will this affect the ordering strategy? What will the holding cost, ordering cost, and the profit be with this new assumption? Which means probably you have found a Q value here, which is more than six months of, uh, six weeks of demand, which means that you if you are ordering the optimal queue, then some of the sausages will be out of date when at the, the end of the, of the cycle. <coughs> uh, this means that you need to reduce the queue to meet the shelf life of six weeks, and then calculate again the new cost with this new assumption. On problem two, uh, instead of um, at least at the beginning of the problem, you, you, um, you instead of uh, buying from an external producer, you are producing these products yourself. The company produces different components for car, and one component is an air filter, which is supplied as, uh, on an exclusive contract to one of the collaborating partners at a constant rate of 200 units monthly. Still, you have a constant rate, you know the exact demand, but now you are producing yourself, and the production rate will be 6,000 per month. Uh, so here, you have, you're given 200 per month, you're gi uh, the, as the constant uh, demand rate, you're given 6,000 per month as, as the constant uh, uh, production rate. 
Uh, but also, if you look further down here, well, you have a setup time given here, one and a half hour. You have estimated 1,550 per hour for wages and lost profit during setup, which means that you need to find now the setup cost instead of the ordering cost, and the setup cost will be this number, and you need to adjust with how long time you will use for, uh, uh, for setting up this machine. So you need to calculate the value of the setup cost. Uh, the cost to produce is 25, and they are sold for a price of 55. And they have estimated here 22% as the annual interest rate for determining the total holding cost. Then you need to look at the time um, unit for the different parameters. You can see that this is annual, 22% per year, but here you are given rates, which is 200 and 6,000 per month. So you need to adjust to make sure that you're using the correct time unit. Either you have to find the monthly rate instead of 22% per year, or you need to calculate the, um, uh, the, the rate, the demand and the, the production rate for years instead of months. Make sure that you're using the same time unit in the formulas, otherwise this will be totally wrong. So then, on A, how many filters should the company produce in each production run to minimize the annual holding and setup cost? Find the maximum level of inventory on stock and what are the setup costs and the holding costs with this production strategy. At third, what are the cycle time? What proportion of each cycle is used for production uptime? You know that you are going to produce for a while, which is called the uptime period, and then you will stop production and wait until you are done at zero inventory before you start pro producing again. And the production time will then be the uptime. Uh, another producer has uh, specialized on producing air filters and offers the first company to buy the same type of filters at a price of 30. And then you will have 1500 as the ordering cost if they accept this offer. So now you have to calculate what the two different options, either producing yourself or buying from an external vendor and find out what is the cheapest. What will you recommend the company to do? Should they still produce or should they buy from the other producer? At least this is so far we have uh, come in uh, the Kirkland so far in the course, but problem E and F is what I will start presenting now, just after I finish this. Then we are talking about discounts. And the other producer wants to deliver in larger batches and offer two types of discounts. First, the all unit discount, and then the incremental quantity discount. I will present the details on these two discount types in a short while. So, problem three, three sub-problem, and uh, well, I probably mentioned that before, but even there are lots of text here, some of them might also be quite difficult. But if nothing else is stated on assignments and exam, each sub-problem will count equally. Even if some of the, maybe the first questions on, on the first uh, problem is quite easy, this third one is quite m much work and uh, quite complex, if nothing else is stated, they will count equally. So this is a way to well, try to focus on, on an exam and an assignment try to use the time correctly and don't, don't use too much time on what is very complex problem uh, and, and time consuming problem if you, uh, if you are in, in lack of time. Anyway, this problem number three is about uncertain demand, which we maybe start today or at least I will present next week. Uh, you have a book and a paper store which uh, has a specialized monthly magazine. And this is a typical one period problem, a so-called newsboy or news vendor problem, where you need to determine the order size when you have a fixed period of selling uh, the product. A typical example is a newspaper. You need to decide how many newspapers should you buy every day, because you cannot store it until next day. You need to sell everything the same day or the same period because they will have no value the next day. 
uh, in problem B, you should explain the difference between the Newsboy model, which you should use in A, and the so-called QR model, which we will come back to in problem C. And I will not go much into details here because it needs some, uh, well, quite much theory. I will present it uh, next week. Uh, but this is a typical QR model. You need to define the order size Q and the reorder point R simultaneously. So find the best balance of the order size and the reorder point due to some given uncertainty in the demand. And then problem four is about lot sizing, which is described in chapter seven in the textbook, which I will present in two weeks. And here we are given the requirement, what we need, the demand, exact demand, but different demand in 10 coming weeks. And we can see that the variation is quite high from 12 and up to 112, but there are no, uh, what, uh, th there is no fixed rate, but we know exactly what is the demand for each of the weeks. So we should try to look at different heuristics, which we will present later. It is, they are described in the textbook. First, the so-called silver meal, then the least unit cost, and then part period balancing. And then we are back to lingo and LP, linear programming formulations, because this is also a problem which can be solved to optimality by using a solver like lingo. So here, formulate the lingo problem, compare the results and comment the solutions, and then set in some new constraints about production capacity in the lingo formulation and solve it again. So that was problem number, uh, that assignment number three with four different problems, which, well, at least the two first, you should be able to, to solve after this lecture. And then we could uh, continue on uh, chapter four. <coughs> Uh, and uh, as we started next uh, last week, this is the simple EOQ model to define or calculate the order size when you have a fixed demand rate. You know the demand rate, you know how much you will sell. Uh, you have some assumptions here, but all the assumptions will be relaxed later so far by looking at the simple model. The demand is fixed at the lambda units per unit time. You are not allowed to have shortages or stockouts. Orders are received instantaneously because well, they will come at a fixed rate. The order quantity is fixed, and this is what we want to decide now the Q, the order size, the optimal order size per cycle. And the cost structure will be fixed cost, fixed order cost, cost of placing one order independent on, uh, of the size of the, of the order, and you have marginal or variable order cost, uh, well, cost which is dependent on the number of items. Uh, and you have holding cost per unit, which is the cost calculated for storing one item of inventory per unit time, which is usually per year. So the rate looks like this. You have a fixed rate with a slope minus lambda, and you are ordering a given number of items Q, and the stock is reduced. When you re reach zero, you get a new order. And then at a fixed rate, you reach zero and get, uh, and get a new order. Uh, and this time is called the cycle time, noted as the T, the time between two orders. And this is the EOQ solution. I showed how it was calculated last time. It is by deriving and solving the derived formula for the, the cost function. Uh, then we find that the optimal order size Q 
should be equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by the k, which is the one-time order cost, multiplied by the lambda, which is the demand, and divided by h, which is the holding cost. And the holding cost will be the internal interest rate, which is given in a percentage, multiplied by the value of the item. Like we saw on the problems in uh, assignment number uh, three, we saw that the interest rate consisted of three parts. The capital cost, which was 22%, uh, the cost of providing the storage area, which is 3%, and insurance and taxes, which was 2%, which means that the interest rate was 22 plus 3 plus 2, 27. And to get the holding cost, you need to multiply that percentage with the value of the item. So this is the Q, op optimal order size, 2 multiplied by the ordering cost, or in a production situation, the setup cost. This K will mean both, either the ordering or the setup cost, and multiplied by the demand rate and divided by the holding cost per unit. Important, use the same time unit. If you have an annual demand, use the annual holding cost. If you have a monthly demand, use the monthly holding cost. This is very important, otherwise this will be wrong. And <coughs> yeah. Also here, Q is independent of the, what we call the proportional order cost, C, and the, then the, the, the C will be the unit, same as the unit value, and the C is what we are multiplying by the interest rate to get the H. But uh, this will be a constant in the uh, simple EOQ situation, because the C value or the uh, unit value of the item will be independent of the order size. You have to pay exactly the same per unit independent of how many how many units you are ordering. But as we will see in a short while, when you get a, an offer about discount, then this might also be, uh, be relevant. Uh, this is the cost function with the two uh, relevant cost types. One is the ordering cost, this line. Ordering cost formed by dividing the demand by the order size and multiplying by the ordering cost. If you have a high Q, then you don't have to order so frequently, and then the total order cost will be small. If you have a low Q, you need to order very often, and then you will have high ordering cost, because you need to pay this K amount of money every time you place an order. The holding cost, cost of storing inventory, is this linear line. The average size of the stock, which is Q divided by 2, and multiplied by the holding cost per unit. And in total, you can put the two costs together and get the upper curve here, and we can see at at the minimum point here, which is the minimum total cost, these two cost elements are exactly equal. The ordering cost and the holding cost will be uh, exactly at the same level when you have the minimum total cost, shown here. Yeah, sensitivity, I will not say much more about that, but we can go back to the curve and see that this function is what we call insensitive. Even if you are not able to identify thi this point, because some of the variables might be difficult to find the exact correct values, it's not always easy to find the exact value of k, ordering cost, many things can be included. Also, the internal interest rate is, well, it's not easy to say that this should be 25% or any other value. So. But even if you are not able to identify each of them, you could uh, get a pretty good estimate, even if you are have a small deviation from the exact optimal Q, the raise of the cost will not necessarily be very high, because 
this curve is rather flat at the bot bottom here. But also you can see that it raises much higher at the left of the optimal than at the right of, of the optimal. So this is something you, which is important to know about. So you might not be always be able to uh, find the, the correct values of the parameters, but still you can use this one and get an, a pretty good estimate and pretty good policy. Uh, and then we remember problem two in our assignment number three was about production, and this is so called here EOQ with a finite production rate. It can also be called the EPQ, the economic production quantity, means that you are producing the items yourself instead of ordering from an external vendor. Then you can use the same formula, but you need to use this H mark because uh, you need to adjust the size of the stock by this fraction here. So the H mark will be the holding cost in a non-production situation multiplied by one minus the fraction of the demand rate divided by the production rate. Uh, and of course the demand rate has to be smaller than the production rate, otherwise this is not, uh, not feasible. You cannot you need to be able to produce enough to meet the demand, otherwise, well, of course, you should produce all the time to, to sell. Sell all the time, as much as you can. Uh, but here, with this production, we can see that now we have a situation looking like this. And this here is not exactly correct, there is something missing. But here, you have an uptime period, which is the time when you are producing items, still when you are producing, you also have a demand. So the slope here should actually be the production rate minus the demand rate, so it should be a lambda here. And then when you are stop, stop producing, you will have a slope which should be minus lambda, the demand rate here, just as in the, uh, when you are buying from an external vendor. And then you start producing again, and you have only a demand. The cycle time will be the same, time between two, uh, when you start production two times. And the T1 here is what we call the uptime, the time of production, which is a fraction of the total cycle time. So this two situation you have uh, now uh, in problem one and problem two in, in the assignment, so you should be able to, to try to, to calculate and solve this problem. This was so far we got last time, and then we start on next topic about discounts. Quantity discount models, and discount is given when the vendor wants to sell more items each time. So, we can say to you that if you buy so and so many items, then you will get, get a lower price. And in this course, we will look at two different types of discounts. One is the all unit discount, which will give you a discount for all the units in the order. So if you are placing an order which is higher than the so-called breakpoint, then you will get a discount of all the units. But the other one is the, the discount system, which is called the incremental quantity or incremental discount, where you get a discount only to the number of units above the breakpoint. We can try to look at the figures. This is the all unit. You have breakpoints of 500 and 1000. If you are ordering less than 500, you have to pay 30 cents. If you are ordering between 500 and 1000, you have to pay 29 cents. And if you're ordering more than 1,000, you have to pay 28 cents. And this is for all the units, so it's very easy to see by looking at this figure. If you have planned to order 499, you should rather buy one extra because then the total cost will be smaller. And there is a point here where well, what you now want to find is where is the total cost smallest for which type of discount or eventually using the EOQ value will give us the lowest total cost. And then the other type, the incremental quantity discount, looks like this. 
you have a fixed price for the first 500 in the order and then you also have a fixed price for the next 500 but then this price is smaller and for those exceeding the second breakpoint you will have to pay an even smaller cost here so here 30 cents for the first 500 29 for the next 500 difference between these two values and 28 cents for those exceeding 1000 cost curves will look like yeah properties here all units the optimal will occur at the bottom of one of the cost curves which we will see in a short while uh, or at the breakpoint of course while on the incremental discount the optimal will always occur at a realizable EOQ value which we will see how we can calculate because now we need to adjust the EOQ formula and uh, uh, because it's not well the, the very simple situation as we have seen earlier here is the cost curve for the all unit discount here we can see this is the original cost curve at this point is the minimum or the EOQ value which is 400 in this situation the lowest value but then by reducing the price to the second option you are not allowed or you will not get the price until you reach this level so the lowest possible quantity for getting the new price is at the breakpoint of 500 and similar this is the cost curve for the third price but it will not be uh, you will not be allowed to pay that price and uh, if you are not using an uh, order size of more than 1000 so the three possible optimal policies here are either this one the EOQ value or this breakpoint with the first new price or this point with the third uh, with, the th with the next uh, new price for the, the second discount and here is the cost curve for the incremental quantity discount where you can see that the curves will meet at the breakpoint since we have a fixed price for the first 500 and another fixed price for the next 500 this curve will meet here and then you'll follow this curve for the next 500 items and then it will meet a new curve and follow that one for those the exceeding uh, 1000 per in an order the possible options here are either this one or this one always at the bottom of a cost curve even if the bottom for the second price is here this is outside the scope of that price because the scope of that price doesn't start until the order size is more than 1000 so here looking at this curve we have only two possible options this one or this one I will show how to calculate this uh, later today but first we will focus on the all unit cost and this is something else <coughs> uh, and as always it is uh, much easier to understand if you look at an example so I will now present an example from the textbook page 220 example 4 4 and this is uh, the same numbers as we are using here we have breakpoints at 500 and 1000 we have the prices of 30 cents 29 cents and 28 cents as the three possible options so looking at uh, the cost function it will look like this the cost which now is dependent on the Q variable will either be 30 cents if the order size is smaller than or equal to no smaller than 500 uh, and then the second option if you're ordering at least 500 but less than 1000 you will get a smaller price a lower price 0 0.29 if 500 
less than or equal to Q, which again is less than 1000. And third alternative, 0 0.28, if Q is larger than or equal to 1000, like this. This is now the three possible options for the unit price. <coughs> and what we now should do is first try to calculate the EOQ value for all these three price alternatives. So we can try to find the Q, let's call it the Q0, which is the first price, the original price, um, and then use the square root of 2k lambda divided by h, and h will be c multiplied by i, or here we probably use a capital i, like this, which is 2. And in this example, we have a k value of 8. And we have an annual demand of 600. And the unit cost is uh, 30 cents. And we have an interest rate of 20% which will give us an optimal order size of 400. So this is now the optimal order size for the price of 30 cents. The ordering cost is 8 in this example, the demand rate is 600, and the internal interest rate is 20%, and to get the holding cost you have to multiply by the 30% uh, or 0 0.30 which is the cost per unit in this situation. And we can do the similar. Let's do the, find a Q1 and then we call this one C0 and then of course Q1 will be exactly the same values 2k lambda the ordering cost and the demand rate is the same. Now we use the C1 price which is 29 and uh, multiply still by the interest rate 20% and we will get the optimal order size of 406. We can also see that on the curve here. 400, this is the same example, so 400 is the lowest point on this line. 406 is the lowest point on this line but 406 will not give us the discount to get this price. Which means if we want this price, we need to raise the order size to 500, which is the lowest quantity we will get a new price. And looking at the third example, the Q2, the optimal Q, use the same formula, 2K lambda divided by now the new price c2 multiplied by the interest rate c2 is 28 percent the optimal order size in this case will be 414 which is the lowest point on this line but this is of course very far away from the quantity that will give us this price so this is less than 1000 so now we have three different options which might be the optimal policy with this discount. Either use 400 and get no discount, use an order size of 500 and get a discount so you only pay 29 cents, or use an order size of 1000 and get a discount so you only pay 28 cents. These are the three possible options of the optimal policy in this case. Uh -huh. So what we now have to do is to find the cost of these three options. 
and we remember the cost function g of q the cost function is dependent on q the order size uh, it <coughs> consists of the setup cost which is the demand divided by q this will tell us how many orders will be placed in one full year the annual demand divided by the order size this will give us the number of orders per year and multiplied by k which is the cost per order one time cost of placing an order this is the setup cost plus next part is the holding cost cost of storing inventory it is dependent on the average size of the stock and the average size of the stock will be one half of the maximum order size which is decided by Q this is the average size of the stock and it has to be multiplied by the holding cost cost of storing one unit of inventory and the holding cost as we did here uh, it consists of uh, it is the product of the unit value and the internal interest rate so we can use C and I instead of the, the small h here to find because we will have the cost for different values of C but well as we have seen with the EOQ formula these are the two relevant parts of the cost function the ordering cost and the holding cost but I also mentioned that there are one third part which now starts to be relevant and this is the purchase cost because the purchase cost in the standard situation for the EOQ formula it was a constant the purchase cost is the annual demand multiplied by the unit value plus demand multiplied by C if the C is fixed independent on Q this will be a constant and uh, the optimal order size will not be dependent on the purchase cost but now the C is actually dependent on the order size because it will be different for different values of the order size so now we need to include the purchase cost also in the cost function here and then let's try to calculate the cost for these three options and uh, I might use a few minutes over time that I will finish this example before we take the break let's now first look at G of 400 what is the cost when you are ordering 400 items well you have a still have an annual demand of 600 you have to divide by 400 the order size you have to multiply by K which is 8 in this example 8 dollars for placing one order plus the average size of the stock which is one half of the order size Q the C value is now 30 cents if you're ordering 400 items and the I value was given to be 20 percent and if we now also add the purchase cost we have an annual demand of 600 and a C value of 30 cents and this gives us a total cost of 204 <coughs> Uh, and we can also see on the figure here 204 will be the value of the minimum point here. here next option will be to order 500 so G of 500 well if you are ordering 500 still 600 is still the demand this will be at the same 8 is still the ordering cost but this value need now to be replaced this is the Q value which need to be replaced by 5 similar in the holding cost 
ordering 500 items, then we need to replace this value. Still, the average will be formed by dividing by 2. This will now be 29 instead of 30, since we have a new price with this order size. But 20% is the same. And the demand of 600 is the same, but the price will be different. So calculating this formula with 500 instead of 400 and 0 0.29 instead of 0 0.30 will give us a value which is 198.10. Like this. And then we have the third option, which is an order size of 1000. Still, the demand and the ordering cost is the same. Now, the order size is 1000 instead of 400. 1000 here, 28 cents instead of 30. And then we will find the total cost of 200.80. Which means that in this case, we have checked the cost of this order size, 400. We checked the cost of this order size, 500. And this order size, 1,000. And found that the best policy will be this one. Ordering 500 would give us a total cost of 198.10, which is the lowest total cost of all these three options. So in this case, with the all unit discount, the optimal order size is 500, then you will get a discount and only pay 29 cents per item. Okay, let's take a break and I will, I have some examples on this. I will first in, an, in 15 minutes, I will present the order discount type and then we will see if we can get time for, for examples. Otherwise, I will upload them in, in front of so you can start them yourself.